Welcome back to Automobile Engineering. Now today we'll discuss on the three learning outcomes. One is the chassis components of the automobile, where the engine components are installed on the automobile chassis. The frame on which the automobile components are installed is called as a chassis. Now, what is the difference between frame and frameless construction of a chassis? This is the second objective and third objective is the function and types of the frames. What is the function of the frame and what are the types of Now here in this diagram you can see there is a one frame. On this frame different components are installed. These components are chronologically installed from left to right. You can just observe that the first component is the radiator. A radiator is needed to cool the engine, to circulate the coolant and to keep the temperature of the engine constant. Then engine where the actual power is developed. That engine is the second component. Now after engine you will find that clutch is installed. Clutch, clutch because Clutch, the function of the clutch is to engage and disengage the engine from the transmission line. You cannot continuously keep the engine engaged to the transmission line, line because you need to stop the vehicles many times. You, so, uh, at every time you, you need not have to switch off the engine. So, clutch, the function of the clutch is to engage and disengage the engine from the transmission line. So, say third component is the clutch. Now after clutch we need to vary the torque. So torque box in general it is called as gear box. So gear box is installed after clutch. Now from that clutch you can have um, in the last lecture we have discussed about the different power transmissions that is a rear wheel drive or front wheel drive or four wheel drive. Now later on through these shafts called propeller shafts the transmit the power is transmitted to wheels up to wheels or rear wheels maybe to the front wheel if the power is transmitted to the front wheel it is transaxial type now you can you can look at the components different components now here frame is the main part on which these all components are installed there are side members of the frame so this is the basic structure of the automobile without body now we'll discuss what is the difference between frame and chassis here frame frame is the supporting component of a automobile vehicle i have shown the frame on the above figure it is the foundation for carrying the engine transmission system and steering system by means of spring axle rubber pads etc you can install all the major components on the of the engine of the vehicle on this frame the frame are made of box type uh, structure it may be of tubular channel or it may be of u-shaped section welded or riveted together it may be welded or it may be riveted together now what is chassis then chassis is when an engine transmission system steering and wheels are fitted on the frame the assembly is known as the chassis total assembly is known as the chassis it is the backbone of the vehicle all the components are installed here it is the vehicle without body it is the vehicle without body many times when we are traveling from uh, on highway you will find that only the trucks without body it's a chassis are moving from one place to another place we are, we have seen those chassis that is that component is called chassis means chassis is a um, part where there is no body but all components are present it can move from one place to another way it contains all the major units necessary to propel the vehicle propel means moving the vehicle vehicle can be driven after placing the driver seat on the chassis if the driver seat uh, on highway we'll see that uh, we observe that the only driver is sitting on the chassis and the vehicle is moving now what are the functions of the frame what are the functions on which different components are installed 
to support chassis components and the body this is the first to support all the chassis component to withstand the static and dynamic load of different components of the chassis now imagine that when the vehicle is moving on the speed breaker the static dynamic loads are coming on the different components of the frame or the chassis then it must absorb those all loads to withstand load of the body because imagine the heavy fully loaded truck you can imagine that truck the total load will be taken by the body to carry load of the passenger goods carried in body the bus is there so all the passengers are there so to, to carry the load of those passenger to withstand the stresses caused due to uneven road condition uneven road conditions this is a common feature of the road so uh, the body must withstand those stresses to withstand force caused due to turning of vehicle and sudden braking or acceleration when there is a turning of the vehicle vehicle move from left to right so twisting force will be coming on the frame it must absorb it must sustain that turning force it must sustain the braking force because when brakes are applied vehicle will move forward when a vehicle accelerate vehicle move backward so all these loads or the stresses must be withstand by the frame these are the functions of the frame now what are the types of the frame there are three types of frames generally found one is the conventional frame second is integral or unit construction or frameless chassis integral means the frameless chassis there is no frame only all the body and the miss body and frame it is made up of one form we'll discuss that and third is the half integral and half frame chassis means half it is conventional frame and half body type so by figure we can differentiate between the conventional frame and frameless construction here you can observe that in conventional frame you'll find that the two frames are moving from one play one uh, from uh, front to back and all the sub members are attached to that so this is conventional frame now where in the frameless construction you won't find any frame but the all the structure that is called mono construction it is called mono construction because all the parts of the body total is made up of one form or in the same sheet total uh, there is no um, strong uh, frame you will you won't find any strong frame but the all parts can be installed on the same uh, same mono construction body now here is the semi integral frame where half frame is fixed on the front front end on which the engine gearbox and front suspension is mounted so half frame and half mono construction or frameless structure is there because uh, this type of uh, vehicles uh, nowadays you won't find because the weight of the vehicle will increase if you um, install the um, conventional type of frame so why but it is advantage advantage yes when vehicle met with an accident the front frame can be taken easily to replace the damaged edges frame and it is strong enough it can withstand uh, all the parts uh, the weight of the all parts so this type of uh, chassis you will find in the fiat cars uh, in earlier fiat cars uh, those uh, mm, we will call it as a taxi in mumbai now these are the types of the frames so frames are of c type channel maybe a box type rectangular cross section or in some cases you will find the tubular frame tubular frame is round pipe frames so if you um, if you look the body of the tracks uh, tracks forge forge motor uh, the um, uh, frame is made up of a tubular section you can observe it when a uh, tax or tracks or the any vehicle is uh, parked at anywhere you can observe such type of structures from the bottom side of the vehicle now what are the materials of the frame and loads on the frame generally 
the frame is made up of my steel because it is easily fresh it can be easily welded used to be uh, invariable choice for all frames but modern heavy commercial and even some light uh, vehicle fr uh, frequently have frames of carbon magnet steel with ill stress of about 3620 kg per centimeter square so this is the new modern material carbon magnet steel but in general you will find the my steel as a material with the introduction of this uh, independent front suspension because um, earlier there are common uh, suspensions but now in the modern cars you will find that the independent suspensions means one wheel is having its own independent suspension system so chassis frames we are called upon to take much higher torsional loads this was because whereas the centers of semi elliptic leaf springs on the beam axle have to be well inboard of the front wheels to leave a clearance for steering them so the effective spring base distance between the spring centers with independent front suspension is approximately equal to the track in these circumstances when a wheel on one side only rises over a bump on the speed breaker the upward thrust it exerts on the frame has a much greater leverage about the longitudinal axis of the car so this is a design aspects that's why we need to select such a material such a size of the material such a uh, dimensions of the frame that it will withstand all these loads the transverse members transverse members means the members which connects between two frames most heavily loaded in the torsion are of course those that support the independent front suspension this is partly because of brake torsion reaction because while brake uh, when brakes are applied the vehicle moves forward and all load uh, the load carrying by the vehicle will move forward reaction which is applied by the rearward thrust of the road on the tire contact path and transmitted through the brake disc or the drum brake back plate to the stub axle and hence through the suspension link to the frame these are the components now onwards we will discuss these all components installed on the frame is from starting from uh, radiator engine clutch gearbox differential all these components we will discuss one by one hope you will enjoy you have enjoyed this lecture you will learn something from this lecture thank you thank you